In this video, I want to discuss something very important. Okay, that's the difference between um, active and passive uh, transformations, or in this case, uh, rotations. Okay, so it's it's a crucial difference actually, and it will reappear uh, many times as we move through um, our course. So the idea is, it makes a big difference uh, if we're talking about rotating the object itself in space or rotating the coordinate system. Okay, what I mean by that is, if you think about all of the transformations we've discussed so far, it doesn't matter which transformation, whether it's scaling or uh, reflection or rotation, we've always only considered the transformation of the object itself, whether it was the equilateral triangle or the, the point in the 2D plane. We were always moving or transforming the object. Okay, that's known as an active, uh, as an active transformation or it's sometimes given the name an alibi transformation, okay? You're moving the object to a new position, but keeping the uh, coordinate axis the same, okay? But there is also the idea of a passive transformation. This is where you keep the object in place and instead you move the coordinate system, you move the axis, okay? Now this is actually, they're related, okay? But they're slightly different. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to derive the same expression as we had in the last video, but uh, instead of an active transformation, we're going to do a passive transformation. Okay, so I've uh, put our previous result up here just for reference sake. Okay, the last time when we were discussing an active transformation, this is the result we got. The new coordinate x and y uh, is given by some combination of the original x and y coordinate. Okay, now consider this scenario. Okay, we have a, a point which is uh, radius r away from the origin, and it's the point p with coordinates x and y. Okay, these coordinates are measured in the xy plane, the normal xy plane, which is in blue. Okay, and this point is an angle phi away from the x axis. Now imagine we don't move the point P that stays put, but instead we rotate the coordinate axes. So the X axis moves up to X dash and the Y axis moves over to Y dash. Okay, and we rotate it, we rotate an, an angle theta. Okay, that's this angle theta here. The X axis moves an angle theta uh, upwards like this. Okay, so we've transformed the coordinate system, not the object. Okay, if we do this, uh, you can see that if we consider, uh, we consider this uh, point P, if we consider in the original axis, the original coordinate system, I should say, uh, relative to X and Y, then we're looking at this triangle here, okay? And we can derive the same expressions as we got before. So X is cosine, that should say R, let me fix that. So R, X is R cosine phi, and Y is R sine phi, talking about this triangle here, okay? Now, when we rotate the, the reference frame, what happens is uh, we're now uh, trying to find the point P, its coordinates, uh, in the X dash, Y dash frame. So we have to find the X coordinate by going perpendicularly down to the x dash uh, axis, okay? So the relevant triangle is now this one, the red radius r, the perpendicular projection here, and the, uh, uh, the coordinate um, part here along the x dash axis, okay? So it's this triangle here. That we're now dealing with okay so if we look at this triangle you'll see that the relevant angle inside here inside that triangle the relevant relevant angle is the full the full angle of the coordinate axis minus this angle theta so it's phi minus theta is that angle in there okay and then we can um, 
derive similar expressions uh, that we got the last time. So we now have x dash is r cosine phi minus theta and y dash is r sine phi minus theta. So we're dealing with the difference of two angles, not the sum of two angles like we had the last time. And that, that, uh, that creates um, new expressions. Okay, so we follow the same procedure as we did in the previous video. We take this x dash expression here is r cosine phi minus theta and we use a, a trigonometric identity that is freely available. Um, the proof is uh, easy, relatively easy, okay? Uh, we're just going to use this identity as is. Okay, so if we multiply it out, we get r cos phi times sine theta plus r sine phi sine theta, okay? If we look back here, we can replace r cosine phi with x, so that's x cosine theta, plus we can replace r sine phi with y, so that is our expression for x dash, okay? We can do the same thing for the y dash uh, coordinate, so if we multiply out this bracket we get r sine phi cosine theta, minus r cosine phi sine theta. Okay, and then looking back here, we can replace r cosine phi with x. So that's uh, r cosine phi, r sine phi rather, r sine phi gets replaced with y. So it's y cosine theta minus this time. We can replace r cosine phi with x. So that's x sine theta. And just swap, swapping them, you get minus x sine phi plus y cosine theta. And that's the coordinate y dash. Okay, so this, these are our uh, new expressions for x dash and y dash under a, under a passive rotation. Okay, so this is the new coordinate of this point inside this reference frame, and this is the y coordinate inside the new reference frame of the same point P. Okay, so if you compare these two, okay, these two equations with these two, you see that they're similar, but they're not quite the same. Okay, here you have a, a, a negative y sine beta. Here you have a plus y sine theta. These angles are equivalent. I just chose different names because uh, we were talking about a different um, scenario. Okay. Um, if you look at the y dash, there's a minus x sine theta, whereas this is positive. Okay, so they differ uh, in their sine. And we're going to explore uh, the uh, implications of this in the coming videos.